Crossroads Media. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Miserable, miserable time tonight. Before we dive into the action, if you're new to the channel, smash that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button as well. Over on Twitter, at Broads81, that's my personal account. Make sure you hit the follow button there. And, by the way, check out the blogs that have been posted on BroadsMedia.com. We are really implementing writing to the website. We're looking forward to it. Thank you all so much and enjoy the show. What an ass kicking. Honestly, the Eagles just got their ass kicked on national TV in Dallas, your biggest rival, and I was afraid that the moment would be too big for the head coach, for some of the younger players. I did not anticipate Jalen Hurts playing that poorly, but here we are, you know? Every single part of this team basically sucked. This is what I was afraid of with Nick Sirianni. It's all cute when it's early August and training camp is just getting underway. Preseason game one. Here's Nick Sirianni. He's goofy. He's funny. He wears t-shirts. He's different. What happens when you get your ass kicked? What happens when you consistently blow? What happens when you don't have the answers? One of the most concerning things to me after the game, I had to listen to Nick Sirianni speak, and he said he wanted to keep up with the Dallas Cowboys because they knew how great they are offensively. What? You wanted to try and make this a shootout? You tried your game plan, which, by the way, you failed miserably. One of your touchdowns was due to throwing an interception, was which was an extremely horrendous throw to Jane LeRager on the right side of the field. But you scored because of getting pressure and Fletcher Cox lands on the football. You're concept of let's score a lot of points you have 14 points offensively so clearly that didn't work that was abysmal but just the fact that that was even in your head hey let's try and outgun them let's try and just score 30 plus with them no keep Dak Prescott on the sideline keep Ezekiel Elliott on the sideline don't allow Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb and Wilson, Cedric Wilson, to make plays. Keep the ball in your hands. Move the clock. Move the chains. Run the damn football. I'm not an, uh, an old school get off my lawn. You need to run the football extremely balanced 50-50 every game. But excuse me, what? What? Did we see from the run game today? Nothing! It wasn't even existing. The run game today was six billion times worse than anything Doug Peterson put together. Let that sink in. And Mr. Discipline, Mr. Fundamentals, you lack that a lot. And some of these, you have men downfield, ineligible guys downfield because of the way the play is being ran, because of the lack of execution in the play, the, the play design at times. Like, what are we doing? Jalen Hurts extending the play. Dillard's up in the play. And there was another one, too. Or well, one of them w w was maybe another line. Maybe there was the one play, though, where it was a miscommunication on the snap. Nobody knew where the ball was going. Dillard 6,000 feet above everybody else, in front of everybody else. And I'm not sitting here bashing Andre Dillard. I thought for the most part, his number was not being called all night long. Landon Dickerson, Jesus, that was brutal. Now, I, I mean, the dude's in a tough spot. He should not be playing right now. Health-wise, he should not be playing. And maybe that's a flaw on the way that they handled him specifically. Not saying he can't play. I'm just saying based off of his circumstances, the, the injuries in the past, just getting thrown into this without maybe the proper offseason, the proper preparation. Is there a correlation? Because the skill is inevitable. And then we're hearing reports afterwards that he's limping a bit on a bad knee after the game. Not a great look. A ton of injuries again today. Isaac Sayamalu carted off the field. Kayvon Wallace got banged up early. Marcus Epps got thrown in there. 
You know, the defense, they scored the one touchdown. They had the fourth and goal line stand, which I guess you could really make the argument that Dak Prescott got the ball over, but there wasn't enough evidence to overturn it on the replay booth, so you got lucky. But how about the fourth down situation by the goal line where you're having a three-man rush, dropping everybody back, and they still have a wide-open guy in the back of the end zone. Jonathan Gannon got shelled. Seriously, that defense got mowed right through by Kellen Moore. And it wasn't even anything painful and super creative, right? I mean, it wasn't explosive. It was painful. Let me rephrase that. It was extremely painful. This basic-ass plays of running the football. The Dallas offensive line throwing some double teams to the tackles. Linebackers lost. I mean, I can point the finger at so many people tonight and say, they were lost. How are you lost? You got to beat Dallas T-shirt on all week long. See, you can do that if you win. And if you don't win, we have every right to criticize. But I thought Jonathan Gannon got exposed. They were running the same plays over and over again. Getting big yards too. Six, seven, eight yards. Grinding you down. Zeke Pollard, Zeke Pollard, play action. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Think about this. Run the ball, play action, plays work, get the seams you're looking for. But there were mistakes all over the map. That early on play, CeeDee Lamb's wide open through the middle of the field. The penalties, it's a disaster. They are not a disciplined bunch. Derek Barnett, you're a joke! An absolute joke! And he probably should have got some sort of penalty early on. Javon Hargrave ended up having a, a little bit of a, a, of a stupid one, chucking a lineman down to the ground. But prior to that, Derek Barnett's just laying on Dak Prescott, apparently. And he, he had penalty early later on in the game. You should have got that one earlier, but later on the game, his name's being called out. And then, yes, Nick Sirianni was caught on TV basically admitting it's always him. Yeah, it is always him because he doesn't know how to play the sport. And you know what's crazy? You know, you talk about the injury to Brandon Graham, which is clearly significant to this squad, right? This is how they started out the game. Milton Williams, not Josh Sweat. Patrick Johnson also starting. Just bizarre. And you ask the question, what is this team? I have no idea. I have no idea what they try and do offensively. I mean, I was informed afterwards that their mentality was to let's score a lot of points. They did a terrible job at it. But seriously, if you're to say three weeks into the season, you should know something about your team. That would be great. I know nothing other than Javon Hargrave is seriously wow. Other than that, I got nothing for you. Nothing. A few times, Nick Sirianni blew my mind. There was a third and nine play right from the jump in the third quarter that had a 0% chance of actually working, which is just hilarious. Jalen Hurts got pretty much boned right from the jump. Uh, zero plays with motion at snap. Let me know how great that is. There were a few different spots where he punted. He punted right before half on Dallas's 49-yard line. It was a fourth and five. And then there was a, another fourth down play. I know I have it written down here. Fourth and five on Dallas's 46th. This is after Sanders actually had a nice gain of 24 yards. But... They punted instead of going for it when they're getting beat pretty good. It's 20-7. to 7. What are you waiting for? Let's just punt and play the long game? Let's put our foot on the gas here a bit and try something. I know it hasn't been effective, and it wasn't really strong. You had limited opportunities early, too. But seriously, I thought some of those were really weak. And I wonder what the analytics would say. They probably would say, go for it. Give it a shot. But instead, they punted it, and they were extremely soft. Once again, not that I fully committed to their offense at that time, and I loved everything that I was seeing, but once you're down to that level, and you have to fight back and climb back, you're on the road, you're not going to have many golden opportunities, as we saw as the clock continued to play out. So when you're there, you might have to take a shot, because it might be your best time to do so. 
Might be your only time to do so. You're not going to get many of them. I thought Jalen Hurts sucked. But real quick, I'm not done. I'm not done on the head coach. The way that he handled Miles Sanders is an embarrassment. But I wonder, is there a correlation between the Doug Peterson era and now Nick Sirianni? Is there a reason why? Now, it should never be to this nth degree, right? You need more rushes than this with Miles Sanders and your backs. But just from a bigger picture, is there a reason why he's not the featured back? We're screaming, why? What is happening here? Maybe they know something we don't. Now, I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt at all. I'm just throwing it out there and saying, is there something to this? I thought that there were two possible momentum swings that they completely failed on. One was, uh, there was four minutes and 11 seconds left in the first half. They were also getting the ball at the start of the third quarter as well. So maybe in a 20-7 to game, you score right before half, and we've seen this now against the 49ers and against the Falcons. Scoring at the halftime part of the game was very crucial to who came out victorious. Well, there was a punt, but there was a holding on the punt return. Then Rager's goes backwards. Here's Jalen Rager going backwards when he actually receives the punt. Dickerson got exposed at second and 21. There was a holding on Isaac Sayamalu at second and 31. Then it was third and 24. And Dallas didn't take the timeouts. Mike McCarthy was a fool. Very dumb. I mean, you talk about a lack of IQ and a lack of understanding time management. Whatever Mike McCarthy was thinking at that time was clearly the wrong thought process. You just missed a chance to maybe even punch the Eagles again with an offense that was actually doing damage and moving the rock. I'd be pissed at my head coach if he lost me a drive to even score more points. And realistically, they scored 41, was it? Finished with 41? Should have been 48. Really, should have been 49. Wasn't there a missed extra point in there? Missed extra point. A touchdown that should have been called, that wasn't called. Whew, almost a 50-burger. Almost a 50-burger. Yo, JG, I'm looking at you, Mr. Zone. And then whenever they made a change, and if they did try something new, Kellen Moore had the answers instantly. And you basically knew as the game was playing out, the in-game adjustments were going to be monstrous if they could even find any out. There wasn't really much to it whatsoever. So that was the first momentum swing that they missed out on. Then in the third quarter, the score was 27-14. to They just scored a touchdown. Josh Sweat and Avante Maddox get to Dak Prescott. Greg Ward almost blocked the punt. Three and out. Three and out. There's confusion. Dillard gets up in the play. That's when the flag came in on him. And from there, that's all she wrote. Three and out. You just scored a touchdown. You had a big hit on Dak. Dak got hit a couple times, too. TJ Edwards had a mean one down by the end zone. Got him pretty good. But yeah, look, this Dallas team, and it's interesting, right? Because we were talking about it all week long. Where's the juice for this game? Why isn't there any buzz? Well, we were waiting to figure out if this team was going to respond, if they would have any sort of life. How do they handle the adversity? Quite frankly, they sucked at it. But we asked the question, where is the buzz? And we wondered, are we caring more than the Cowboys do? And at the end of the day, I think it was laid out this way. If you're the Dallas Cowboys or if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, you're not worried about the Eagles because they're so good and they have lethal weapons that you're afraid of. You know what it is? You're just worried about yourself. As long as you don't shoot yourself in the foot. If you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, you're not looking at this matchup as, oh man, I am scared of Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni and their game plan that they might put on us. You're thinking, hey, let's play our game. If we play our game, we're fine. But I'm just worried that maybe we'll have an off day at the office. It had zero to do with who the Eagles are. It had everything to do with just themselves. But you could see the clear difference. That offense made sense. It had identity. It had flow. And we knew entering this season, it wasn't about the win total. It was going to be a tiny win total. But make it look good. Have your weeks build off of one another. Competitive. You know, not fundamentally flawed. Not one of the worst penalized teams in the history of the NFL. None of that. 
If you lost games, but it made sense, it looked right, uh, you can get behind the ideas, the beliefs, the concepts, and you just don't have enough talent, and you know you're young, you know you're raw. That's different. That's different. I could support a loss if it looks like that. If you're getting crushed by your division rival, and it looks this way on national TV, you can't be getting embarrassed like that. And Nick Sirianni looks lost, and that scares me. I was afraid at the press conference. Everyone wanted to say, no, you, you're just overreacting. What happens when you get annihilated? What happens when a team bends you over and literally destroys you? Because that's what's happening. That message isn't going to stay clear. The vets start laughing like, dude, really with this guy? He's a clown. If he keeps stresses the same nonsense. And I also mentioned that we'll start to get used to the Nick Sirianni tendencies after the game. He's putting the blame on himself again. Doesn't feel the same, does it? And what happens if they lose to the Kansas City Chiefs next week, who, by the way, lost two in a row, and they're going to have an edge to them. Andy Reid coming back to town as well. That's not going to be easy. Pat Mahomes is probably disgusted and pissed. What happens now? What happens if you get punched again? Beat up good again. This time at home. Against a Chiefs team that definitely has the firepower to expose your holes still. It won't last. This is the NFL. And the fact that it's not creative. It's not creative. This offense is stale. It's boring. There's nothing to it. Every snap, you have no idea what's happening. Nothing's building off one another, and that's a problem. Let's get to the quarterback. Jalen Hurts was bad. There was a handful of plays, maybe just three or four, maybe four throws or so that stood out to me. And the one that was super ballsy was late when he was running towards the sideline, chucked it up for a late touchdown that really meant nothing. It was an incredible athletic play, but, you know, it is what it is. There was the throw to Quez Watkins when he escaped a possible sack in the pocket, throws it downfield, kind of underthrown. Quez Watkins makes a play on it. He had a nice throw to Rager that didn't count because of a penalty, but it was a super nice touch throw. There was a couple here and there, but basically, he was bad. Jalen Hurts, the moment looked too big for him, and I'm shocked by that. And some of you might say, well, why? How are you possibly shocked by that? You witnessed him in college get benched and not play and Tua came in and became his replacement so why did you think all of a sudden he would work in a big moment because he just has that that vibe to him that he has like the the energy and he's the leader of the team and the fellas look at him a certain way he was going to go out there and lead and throw the football extremely well I thought that was the case I was very wrong he looked overpowered and and overmatched he did leaving the pocket early escaping early Now, your offensive line is extremely banged up too, which is a common theme from last year. And before you say this, this is why you play the preseason. No, this is why you don't play the preseason. Because what you hear is, you're getting hurt anyway. So what's a handful of steps? You're right, you're getting hurt. You see how easy it is to get hurt. I'm not going to double or even add just a couple of opportunities for that injury to happen sooner. Yeah, you're right. You are getting hurt at a crazy clip. It's not because you missed out on six snaps in early August. Please, I'm really done with that. I'm done with this preseason nonsense. It just continues to be discussed and criticized and debated on social media when you see guys fall the way that they have on the offensive line. Maybe there's a correlation between not having the time, but I thought at times he did. He did. So he had the pick six. Staring down his receivers, leaving the pocket early, not scanning the field. It's almost as if if the first receiver's not available, if that first option's not there, he tries to run. And maybe he picks up two, gets to the sideline. You know, this isn't college football anymore where, and the same can be said for Devontae Smith. On that third and 11, he dropped it. Was the throw a tiny bit behind him? Sure, but that's a play Devontae Smith has to make. The Dallas defense is not that good. They could give Quinn as much praise as they want to throughout the broadcast. He ain't that good. And this defense isn't that good. You played into their hands, though. And that's what upsets me. The Dallas Cowboys would have loved, before the game began, to have you go, I want this to be a shootout. They're smiling from ear to ear. 
You're going right into their philosophy, right into what they want, because they can explode with Kellen Moore and these weapons. They showed you they can do it in different ways. Run it down your throat, attack your linebackers. No one believed me when I said linebackers and and running game. I'm telling you, wait. Wait for it. Zeke might not be as explosive as he once was, but the combination of the two definitely does damage to teams. The offensive line today, beat up. Defensive line, nah. Nah. You lose your trench battle. Guess what happens when you lose your trench battle? 41 to 21. So yeah, all around... Jalen Hurts from the one interception in the beginning to the second interception where he's staring down, guys. Devontae Smith slips or no slips. That was read the entire way. It's very predictable. It seems just like it was last year, and that's exactly what we could not have entering this season. It had to feel different. It needed to look different. It looks a 1,000% the same, and that's a problem to me. We wanted to see creativity, pre-snap movement, motion involved, jet sweeps, getting guys going in space. Right now, throws five yards down the field. Quick little throws, and some of them not even happening smoothly. Hell, you're talking about right before the pick six, missing Dallas Goddard with a lot of open space in front of him, with a lot of green grass there. You make a mistake, and what do you know? It somewhat blows the game wide open. You saw the difference without Brandon Graham. I mean, that wasn't really shocking. And speaking of shocking, you know, I do find it funny. I had a couple people, uh, one of my old teammates, and someone I went to school with, uh, they were kind of texting me throughout the game randomly. I don't talk to these people too much, but when the Eagles games are on, sometimes I get those random text messages, and we're kind of going back and forth. And I, and I get the, like, oh, I'm depressed, or, oh, this is so bad. And I'm going, to, yeah, it is. The, and, and they're not good. And I didn't expect it to be this ugly, this horrendous. It is. It's way worse than my expectations were. At the same time, it's not insanely shocking either, if that makes sense. I'm not so shocked. I cannot believe this. I, there is sense to it. I did not anticipate it getting this version of ugly. Not to this level. But I've seen things more shocking happen in life. Entering the season, knowing the circumstances, seeing the roster, seeing the turnaround, knowing the retool. It does make sense. You got puppies out there. Nick Sirianni, we all question the age. The age of this entire coaching staff. Who do you lean on when you need some help? Who's the veteran experience? They don't have any. Not at the crucial positions. Yeah, defensive tackle and Fletcher Cox. Okay. That's not the same as quarterback head coach. Defensive coordinator. It's completely different. Hey, big play slay. Where you at? Defense for all this emphasis of punching the ball out of receivers' hands. Creating all these splashy turnover. What? Oh, that's right. And I got you. Javon Hargrave had the play when the Dallas Cowboys were basically at their goal line. And Dak, the ball came out of his hands. He recovered it. And and I mentioned Josh Sweat and Avante Maddox getting home at one point. But consistency-wise, it just hasn't been what you needed it to be. Everyone gets on Jim Schwartz. I don't know. Definitely wasn't as bad as what a lot of individuals said. But Jonathan Gannon. And here's where I'm having trouble with Gannon. It wasn't sharp by any means. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier. When he did make a change, Kellen Moore had the answers. Is that a... Because I'll be honest with you. If I, I was a defender of Jim Schwartz. And sometimes things didn't work. But it didn't work because you just don't have the options. You can make the argument that in some of those seasons that Jim Schwartz was here uh, with where the injuries were and the talent off the street and guys from Foot Locker that being in the middle of the road with those style of players, I mean, you can only do so much. There is an element to me with Jonathan Gannon. While I'm not taking him off the hook at all here, every piece of this coaching staff and every single piece of this team deserves 
to get ripped and to get crucified for sure, uh, to get roasted by us. But I'm just saying, you look at the linebackers in Eric Wilson and Alex Singleton. When you're injured at Brandon Graham's position and you try to make up for it in other ways and you, you look at the run defense that he provides and you think about the snaps that he eats up and you're trying to, to play Milton Williams. And, and I'm not telling you I love the fact that that's the start that they went with, but I'm just saying, you know, how much of this is when you make the change and the other team counters perfectly, what more can you do? Uh, you know, uh, to a degree, though. I mean, we're talking 41 points. That could have been 50. I, I don't want to take this too far. I don't want to blow this way too far out of proportion. I'm just saying, though, you know. I didn't love the three-man rush dropping everybody back, and that got beat. I mean, there's a lot of things I did not like from Jonathan Gannon. I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to take away the emotion and look at it from that aspect. But ultimately, you know, there's still so much that needs to be cleaned up from top to bottom. So we're going to constantly hear the blames on me from Nick Sirianni. We're going to constantly hear uh, that. That's going to be his message. Carson Wentz said we got to get back to the tape. Doug Peterson had his his famous words with Nick Sirianni. He'll take the blame. And that's fine for the first handful of times. But uh, I mentioned this before. If there's no actual fix and you just keep saying it, it doesn't really hit home. It doesn't have the impact. I'll tell you what impacts my life, though. DraftKings Sportsbook. It's been a great start to the NFL season, and it's only getting better at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. DraftKings is kicking off another week of action by giving all new customers a can't-miss offer. Bet just $1 in any football game this week and receive $150 in free bets instantly, no matter what. And this football season, all customers can swing big with DraftKings same-game parlays. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code BROADS to receive $150 in free bets instantly when you place a $1 bet on any football game. That's promo code BROADS to get $150 in free bets instantly. This week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, must be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only, new customers only, restrictions apply, in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. My honest opinion, though, I don't anticipate Jalen Hurts looking this miserable for all these games. I figured there would be really strong moments in the 17-game schedule and really ugly ones as well. Uh, I don't know what he is, and I don't like that this is where I'm at with him three games in. I wish there was some more flow involved so I could have a little bit more of a grasp. But basically, I heard Bob Cooney of the 97.5 The Fanatics Morning Show, John Kincaid Show, and he calls these the water games. You can't put a grasp on it. You can't hold it. You don't really know. You can't get a grasp on the game and on the concepts and on the beliefs here with this offense. And that's basically where I'm still at. And that's that's kind of where I'm at with uh, with Jalen Hurts. Is like, I, I can't get a full grasp on it yet. And to me, that's disappointing because I, I thought I'd at least be a little bit more ahead of where I am right now, which is, you know, the upsetting part. And same with this whole Miles Sanders thing. Uh, you think about how many attempts he had. It's almost male practice. You're really at that point where it's malpractice. It's a fireable offense. I'm not saying fire Nick Sirianni today. I'm just putting it on that level of that's how distasteful it really is to give Miles Sanders that type of workload. Uh, it, it, it is something that cannot happen. All right, we will go to the Anytime Hotline here. The Anytime Hotline is ridiculously swarmed right now. We're going to implement a lot of these calls throughout the week. I know I did a lot of kind of going off myself right now for this initial post-game pod, but once we hear from Nick and once we continue these podcasts in the in the next upcoming days here, I'm going to use a lot more of these. But I'll just pick a couple right now to run through as we uh, kind of wind things down. All right, here we go. Anytime Hotline. Bro with my man. I can't even be mad. This is just pathetic. Nick Sirianni's game plan is trash. Bro, how do you tell me we are in the fourth quarter and there's only two designed running plays? Miles Sanders only has two carries, and that's the only running back. Kenneth Gangwell doesn't have anything. This is horrible. How do you get to the point where you don't run the ball? We were mad at Doug last year for this. And this is even worse. Like, he does mean attempted. Two running plays in the fourth quarter? That's pathetic. 
Well, uh, you know, basically what it comes down to, once the score got out of hand, they decided to drop Jalen Hurts back and try and make up for those points. That was their gameplay. Now, we're we're sitting here trying to question, what was it? What were they doing? Uh, what did they think was going to work? Well, they thought just dropping back, throwing the football that much was going to result in scoring all these touchdowns and coming back in this game. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball to try and score a bunch of points and out score. The Cowboys, you were never going to win trying to outscore them. And, bro, what are you talking about? Just stupid statement. What the hell are you even saying? If, you're, if your philosophy was, let's go toe-to-toe with them offensively. Let's go toe-to-toe. Bang, 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 downfield with this. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. You could technically... Do it where you methodically take clock off and you you work the time. You run the football. You put Dak on the sidelines. You don't give them chances. Make them sit and wait. Have the camera on the broadcast. Watch Zeke on the sidelines upset with his helmet in his hand because all he wants to do is get out there, but their defense can't get off the field because you're consistently moving the clock, moving the chains, running the ball, gaining three, four yards, setting up short third and short opportunities. But instead, penalties, pre-snap penalties, holding penalties. Some of them got declined, so they're not even popping up on the stat sheet. Unacceptable. All right, what's next? Bros, tonight we saw a lot of the issues that people are saying about Jalen Hurts. I saw a quarterback that was going through his reach too early, and he wasn't throwing the ball accurately. They missed time. And some were just bad decisions, like that one interception. But Nick Sirianni, man, my God, dude. Like, I'm sorry, but... You can't be going around saying beat Dallas and everything and then get your ass beat, literally, on primetime TV. And I have no confidence in Blake on right now because, uh, I'm sorry, because, um, dude, he didn't use Miles Sanders at all. He's one of your biggest playmakers. And he gets, what, two carries the entire first half? And, now, and then because we're playing from behind, it barely gets utilized. Everything that I believe so far has been not true. And I don't like that, dude. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's why I wasn't getting sucked in. I had callers way before the season began. I see 12 wins. I see 13 wins. You're just being a loser. You're being a bad fan. You're being a negadelphia. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm honestly looking at this team and saying, they're so new at this. How dare you honestly feel that they're just going to steamroll this team? Oh, because the the Giants stink. The football team stinks. Relax. The Eagles are right there with those teams, unfortunately. But I digress. My biggest problem right now is the head coach. I have the same questions as everybody else does with Jalen Hurts. Uh, I feel optimistic about him. I think that there's an it factor in him, and you need to help. You need a coach that can help that. He's not an Aaron Rodgers. He's not the elite of the elite of the elite of the elite of the top five quarterbacks in the league. But I feel you can do a lot better with Jalen Hurts than than is happening right now at this moment. If Kyle Shanahan had Jalen Hurts, they'd be winning football games in San Francisco. If some of these really creative head coaches had Jalen Hurts, they'd be victorious and probably 2-1 and one at this point. If not, yeah, maybe 2-1. and one. Beating the 49ers, because that scheme sucked. Tonight, I don't know if they would have won, but maybe a better effort. Two and one, though. You'd win football games with him. So I have my concerns. Uh, I think he probably wants that throw back to Jalen Rager. That got intercepted. But at the same time, this coach, just like we saw in years past, is putting him in a position to fail. So my biggest concern right now is, is the head coach. And knowing how different his approach is and knowing how rah-rah high school varsity coach he is and knowing that that doesn't really sit with 9, 10, 11 million dollar players, if not even significantly more, I'm spitting hockey numbers at you on a good day for some of those guys. It doesn't sit with the room at some point. If this is what's going to happen, if you're going to get games handed to you this way and you're not competitive at all, 
the Nick Sirianni voice will be quiet. And here's another thing. What he told us he's about, we're not getting. That, uh, that absolutely cannot happen. Discipline, fundamentals, IQ. Looking yourself in the mirror and making a change because change needs to happen. You said the right thing. You're not doing the right thing. You're talking the talk. You're not walking the walk. I can't have that. All right, what's next? All right, looking at this game, I'm not angry at the players. I'm not angry at the coaching. Is there things to work on after a blowout loss like this? Absolutely. Who am I angry with? Myself. For leaving a call saying that Howie Roseman was off the hook. This man is the biggest problem with this franchise right now, and it showed tonight. The rookies and the young players can't do anything. And I'm watching other teams around the league, Jamar Chase, Asante Samuel Jr., JOK. They're filling in their roles quite fine. We can't do shit when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I'm sorry if I sound pissed off. Like I said, I'm not pissed off at the players or coaches. I'm pissed off that this organization is not holding your biggest liability accountable. Now, I just disagree completely with that. I'm not telling you Howie Roseman is perfect and the latest has been anything to really be all gaga about it, all in love with the hard eye emojis and whatnot. But uh, no, I mean, first off, hiring Nick Sirianni is a Jeffrey Lurie type of decision over uh, Howie Roseman. And I've seen way too much success under Howie Roseman for me to just say after three games that all of this is Howie Roseman's fault. You think of Jordan Maialata, Dallas Goddard, Devontae Maddox, Josh Sweat as a draft class as of late. You know, that counter is one of the miserable ones back in 2017 that you're gonna that you're gonna throw out there. And the fact that you hit on four draft picks in one seat, that's insane. That is like literally absurd. And then Diller, I didn't think Diller played that off. At at times, it kind of fell apart there as there was miscommunication with Jalen Hurts and Miles Sanders for a snap, and uh, then he was ineligible of field, and the way the play design happened, you heard Lewis Riddick explain it on the broadcast, that naturally forces your offensive lineman to be in a position because of the way that it was designed, and Jalen Hurts extending the play to the right and all, but ultimately, like, uh, Andre Dillard, uh, does does that mean bust? Uh, I would say that he did just fine in that spot. You didn't lose because your left tackle. You lost because your game plan was brutal. So I'm not I'm not telling you that Howie Roseman's a perfect guy. But all I say is when you think of general managers in football, who most people listening out there can't even name them, he's top three. So you're just gonna fire people until you find two and one? What are you gonna do? I mean, he's in the top three. General manager, top five. You want to go top five? We'll say top five in all of football. So, take that for what it is. All right, with that being said, thank you guys so much for listening. Before we head out of here, I need to tell you about my friends over at BetQL. Do you want to get an advantage over your sports book? You need to download BetQL, the only app you'll need to make smart bets. Their best bet model scans over 350,000 unique bets per year. Their model covers everything from spreads, over-unders, and player props. Their sharp data so you can see who the pros are backing. Line movements so you can jump on betting opportunities in real time. Team summaries highlighting previous success against the spread and the team over-under. Head to the App Store or Google Play Store now to download BetQL. Enter the discount code BRODES at payment checkout for 25% off of their subscription offerings. You can find more information about them down below in the description. I want to thank everyone so much for hanging out, and I will see you next time.